Good morning, and welcome to The Core Connection. I'm Mira Rubin, here with you on Enlightened World Network. And today's topic um, is expectation. So uh, this should be fun. And I want to take a couple minutes with you before we get started to just settle in. So let's take a deep breath in through your nose and hold it. And just imagine all that oxygen coursing through your body, through your blood cells, through your bones and your muscles, and just enlivening you with wonderful energy. And as you exhale, exhale any tension in your jaw, in your neck, in your shoulders, in your back. And then let's take another deep breath in through your nose. And this time, just imagine that it's sparkling white light moving throughout every molecule in your being and beyond and connecting you with the world in a vibrant and vital way. And as you exhale, just exhale any remaining stress or tension. And then let's just gently take our palms and press them together. Softly, softly rub your fingers against your palms so that you can feel the tickling sensation in your palms and in your fingers and just bring yourselves present to being in this body right here right now and welcome so uh good morning dido I'm so glad to have you here and welcome to everybody else who's joining us today we're going to speak about expectation so let's have a conversation uh one of the things that i have noticed is how expectation is the source of tremendous disappointment miscommunication and <laughs> good morning um so in I, I recently had a um i don't know what we'll call it an uncomfortable conversation disagreement uh that ended up in hurt feelings and and uh, in thinking back about it and actually in trying to address it at the time that it was occurring, what I endeavored to expose for myself and the folks that I was engaged with was the expectations that may have been driving our disagreement or our disappointment or our upset. And... Um, it's it's interesting because I believe that we often operate out of unconscious expectations. So when we get disappointed or when we get upset with someone, it's because maybe they didn't do something or say something that we thought they should have. And um, they didn't feel the way that we expected them to. They didn't say the things we wanted them to and and these these are expectations so i'm going to ask to um ask you to look at expectations you might have let's forget about others for the moment but this is a way that we create a lot of self-punishing is with expectations and then we set these expectations consciously or otherwise and then when we don't meet the expectations we get all bent out of shape and upset with ourselves so let's look at the kinds of expectations we have of ourselves and um, especially as we are uh, being spiritually oriented people with intentions to live uh, out of love and connection and in our highest vibration, uh, maybe you have an expectation of yourself that you never get angry or that you accomplish a certain amount of things in a day or that you're, um, you're, you're uh, emotionally balanced all the time. Let's, let's look at what kind of expectations we have. So I'm going to invite you to uh, share some of the maybe unconscious, previously unconscious expectations that you have of yourself. So one of the expectations that I have had of myself was that I would be emotionally even. 
um, you know, that I, that I wouldn't experience uh, reactivity, let's say, that I had cleared my reactivity. And then when I find myself getting upset over something, it's just like, whoa, where did that come from? What's going on? And in the past, I would have potentially beat myself up for that. And um, now I'm looking a little bit more deeply into it to say, well, what's up? What, why am I feeling upset with myself now? Oh, there was an expectation. Oh, what were the mechanics? Anyway, I get into this whole thing. But let's look at the expectations we have of ourselves. You know, like if you're a parent, maybe you expect yourself to be able to maintain a sense of calm with your kids or... Um, if you are uh, doing a lot of things, maybe you have an expectation that you're going to get X amount done in a day, and then when you don't get it done, it's a cause of upset for you. So where <clears throat> I'm losing my voice this morning. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'll br I brought it back. Uh, where in your life do you notice expectations that cause you discomfort expectations of yourself let's start with expectations of ourselves so let's say there's a certain amount of things you need to do in a day or when I have a certain amount of things I need to do in a day and I don't get them done and I still have things to do and I could have would have should have done it different um, then then I could be using that as an opportunity to beat myself up about my choices I should have done this, I should have done that. So is there is there any place in your life right now where you're seeing that you have some upset with yourself? And if there is a place in your life where you have some upset with yourself, look at what is the underlying expectation. So in this altercation, I'll call it an altercation, that I had with these other folks, um, what I recognized first is that I had an expectation of myself that I would be able to communicate clearly and, and without feeling emotionally reactive. And um, I, looking at my reactivity, I initially fell into self-blame around that. And like there was something um, I should have I should have been able to keep my cool. I should have been able to respond out of connection and love instead of reactivity and, and upset. So that was an expectation that I was imposing upon myself instead of allowing, my, allowing what actually occurred to occur. So um, thank you, Dido, for engaging here. She says, I expect that I should be kind and caring. Exactly. I also expect that I should not make any mistakes at work. If I don't meet these expectations, I get upset with myself. So that's perfect example. A couple perfect examples. I expect of myself that I should be kind and caring. And any, any thought even, sometimes like well, if we have a thought that's unkind or a thought that's uncaring, then we become the thought police and we beat ourselves up for having that thought. Um, rather than just noticing it and say, oh, isn't that interesting? And letting it go and realizing that we don't have to be attached to it. Um, or if we see ourselves uh, being impatient, then we might judge ourselves for not being as kind and caring as we imagine ourselves, uh, as we believe ourselves to be or how we should be. And... Um, I also expect that I should not make any mistakes at work. So I want to I want to address this um, perfectionist tendency, and it's not just to you, Dido. It's to me and to everybody else who believes that uh, we should be perfect and we should always do it right, um, right with a capital R. And um, one of the things that I've learned that has been such a gift is to allow yourself to take massive imperfect action. So what does that mean? It's like we, I know that I'm a, I'm a, I consider myself a recovering perfectionist. So I used to not do a whole lot 
of things because I was afraid that I couldn't do them right or I couldn't do them perfect or I couldn't do them well enough. And it was completely paralyzing for me. And so what I have learned is that it's better usually. I mean, there might be one or two circumstances where you don't want to do something imperfectly versus not do it at all. But in for the most part, when we're trying to uh, create results um, when we're trying to accomplish things it's it's often better to just be in action and if there are errors you fix the errors and become unattached to like unattach your self-worth from the errors that you might make good afternoon hope wellington marshall i'm saying good afternoon because hope is in another time zone <laughs> so i'm this is being broadcast from east coast uh time and hope where are you located again that it's afternoon where you are anyway thank you for joining us it's great to have you back and um we're talking about expectation and how expectation is our ruination. <laughs> so um, with all these expectations and uh, expecting yourself, for instance, Dido was sharing that she expects herself to be perfect, essentially. And uh, I was talking about perfectionism and how I have made, oh, okay, so Hope's in England. Wonderful. Well, well great to see you from across, across the waters here. Um, it's better to be in action and I can tell you that I as I <laughs> as I've adopted that um, that perspective and that policy I have had many occasions to um, be humble because I've had many mistakes to correct however I also have had many many more uh, or, or much greater impact in the world because I did take action and um, doing it uh, even with a mistake, whatever that thing is, most often those mistakes can be corrected. And Dido's here from England as well, except that she lives in Colorado. <laughs> so welcome, Dido. Um, again, across the water. That's awesome. So so let's look at these expectations and expectations of self. So I, I truly, truly, as a recovering perfectionist, have had so many occasions to make corrections again and again. And um, the more that I've had to, the more that I've allowed myself to make mistakes, the less that I, the less of an expectation that I've put on myself, that I have to do it perfectly, the more resilient I become in being able to correct those mistakes. Because this is this is a great metaphor that I've I've kind of guided myself by over the years. But if you think about a ship or a plane, uh, what's happening is when a plane or a ship is moving through its journey, it is constantly course correcting. So there's, it's, it's pointed in a direction and then it gets off course and it course corrects and it gets off course and course corrects. And that's really what happens with us as, lo as long as we allow ourselves to be in action, we get to course correct. And so rather than having the expectation of perfection, perhaps, and the attachment of our identity to that perfection, uh, what we might be able to do is, is move into, um, move into a greater generosity with ourselves to allow for uh, imperfection and action versus perfection and minimal action or perfection and anxious action or, or traumatic action. So let's, what else 
maybe hope I'm going to put you on the spot here. What kind of expectations do you hold for yourself that when you don't meet those expectations, it creates a lot of inner conversation? And, and the reason that I'm asking you guys who are listening to think about this is because we create a lot of suffering from, for ourselves and for others out of expectations. So with this group that I had this uh, kerfuffle with, um, we, there were expectations that were unspoken that didn't match. You know, um, I had an expectation that things were going along based on our original agreements. And um, a pe other people had an expectation that there would be a certain level of, um, of engagement externally through social media um, from our group. And anyway, there, was, there were expectations that we didn't hold in common that we had never spoken. And so as a result, when, when those expectations collided, we got to see that um, we got to see conflict. And w one of the ways to move through the conflict is to identify, dig a bit deeper and identify the expectations. And that can help to untangle the hurt that might be underlying these expectations that weren't met. So I'm, I'm just inviting you, please share, share some kind of expectation. I mean, this might be, um, this might be a little close to home, but you know, let's, let's dig deep and share what kind of expectation you might have of yourself that, um, that sometimes you disappoint yourself and therefore uh, you cause pain. And so the reason that I'm asking for this is because there's a way that we can transform it. We can transform it by looking at, well, what is that expectation? And how can I recreate it in a way that is life affirming instead of uh, inhibiting? So let's think of other expectations. Um, maybe I expect myself to exercise on a regular basis and um, a, a week or a day or a week goes by and I don't get to meet the uh, expectation that I set for myself, I can set myself up for disappointment in that way. Um, then we have the conversation about should and the thing I invite you to look at with these should conversations is whose voice is that should coming from? Like, where did it really come from? Who says it should be that way? Who says? Usually, if we start looking at our shoulds, what we find is that they don't originate with us. You know, um, you should work hard. Who says you should work hard? Good morning, Jennifer. Welcome. We're talking about expectations and uh, now we've just moved into the link between expectations and shoulds. And when we presence ourselves to the expectation and the should that's attendant with it, we get to ask, who says? Who says that that's how it should be? Like, I should work hard, and I'm lazy because I don't work hard. And what is working hard anyway? And who says that that's how it should be? And who says I'm lazy if I don't work hard? And do we really need to work hard? Maybe we need to uh, give ourselves the opportunity to do our work from joy and, and ease instead of hard. So help me out here and let's, let's talk about expectations of self and others. You know, maybe uh, if I'm living with somebody, I expect them to clean up after themselves if they use the kitchen, for example. And um, I live alone by the way and my cat, well, me and my cat, and she doesn't clean up very well. Um, but what, you know, these expectations, when we don't agree, um, when, when someone has expectations of you or you have the expectations of someone else, 
and um, they haven't aligned with those expectations or you haven't, then that is a recipe for conflict or disappointment or frustration. And um, so I'm wondering, is this conversation useful? Is it is it helping you gain any kind of perspective on where you might be able to interject with or, or intervene in some of the areas of disappointment? Jennifer says, I do my best not to should on myself or others. And I think that's what we're coming down to here, Jennifer, is uh, the shoulds, whether they're conscious or otherwise, that we live our lives with are really what we can find at the core of so much of our conflict and and discomfort and upset in our lives and um one of the one of the big places where there are expectations or shoulds is it shouldn't be this way you know like right now there's so much going on in the world with covid with uh, rising social awareness and in recognition of injustice and we can say it shouldn't be this way and um, it's almost 90 degrees here so I'm a little warm sorry um, so it shouldn't be this way the thing is that the notion of the shoulds are overlaid on top of what's there and and prevent us from really being able to interact directly with uh, what is when we are projecting these this overlay of judgment and um, expectation. And so the shoulds in themselves can be really paralyzing. And what we want to be able to do is move into being present in the moment and looking at the requirements of that moment being responsive to that moment. So Hope says, I feel like when I come across someone who may have an illness and I believe I can help because I know, but don't want to feel like I'm just selling products. So I refrain from saying anything. Then I go away feeling a bit down. So there's an expectation that you should help it sounds like hope. Um, you have you have things that could help someone and you don't want to feel like you're selling products. So you refrain from sharing something that might help them because you feel like you shouldn't be just selling products or you're afraid of how they might perceive you. And at the same time, um, you make yourself feel bad because you should have said something. So... It sounds to me, it, it's complicated, right? Don't we make life so complicated for ourselves? It's crazy, right? If you have something that you believe is going to help someone, if you're coming from a place of, of heart and connection with them, you can always ask permission. You can say, hey, um, I have something I think that could really help you. Are you interested? And that way you are not requiring that they should be interested and you are extending your heart and your hand uh, with generosity and respect. So um, I've, I've had that situation a lot too where I, I see really clearly something that would make a difference for someone else and uh, people are not always open to that. People are not always open to change. And rather than uh, projecting on them that they should be receptive to what I have to offer, I, I need to allow them their, their choice. You know, so rather than saying you should really be excited about this thing that's going to make such a difference for you or whatever, to allow them to be where they are, even, even if, uh, even if it's not the way I believe they should <laughs> feel, right? All these shoulds that are, are kind of invisible. Thank you for sharing and being vulnerable there, Hope. I appreciate it. It's awesome. So 
expectation. And typically, uh, this is a, this is another place that expectations get get involved in our lives is if we have, for instance, if we have a, a, an esteem issue, a confidence issue, we might expect that we'll mess something up. You know, we're going into doing something with an expectation that somehow we're going to mess it up or somehow we're going to fail. And with that expectation, there's a much greater likelihood that we will fulfill our own expectation. And then what we get from that is a confirmation and a reinforcement of our own lack of self-worth or self, uh, self-confidence or competence in that circumstance. So um, what, what, we, what we get to do is to really, really look at our expectations. And Hope says that's what she does, but the, hope, the feelings remain. So um, maybe dig deeper, Hope, because underneath there's an expectation that's not being met. When, when we have feelings of disappointment and upset, there's an expectation that is not being met, typically. Um, unless, unless we've had an, you know, when we're, when we're talking about uh, conflict with others. Now, sometimes there are attacks that other people level, level on us and um, we can get upset around those attacks partly because we have our own uh, vulnerability in the area that we've been attacked. Um, but we also have an expectation of they should have treated me differently, they should have whatever. Um, and hope. It, I think it would be interesting to engage a little bit more deeply together about these feelings and, and looking underneath about what the expectation is. Maybe that uh, you should be making more of a difference or you should be able to convince this person of how they could better themselves or what would make a difference. And Dido says, what's the difference between goals and expectations? I feel like my expectations are led by my values, kindness and excellence. But yes, some are fear-based, like I'm going to fail. Our goals, conscious things uh, are goals conscious, things you explicitly choose? I think goals, um, we've spoken about the difference between making states of being a goal versus output or results. Typically, when people think about goals, they think about, I'm going to make $50,000, I'm going to run a 10K, I'm going to travel the world. Um, these things are typically goals. Um, and I, I like to move toward intention, I think, rather than goals. And I don't know if this is simply semantic, but um, the intention is, is more in my lexicon, a state of beingness. So um, I'm, I'm going, I'm enjoying bringing myself to a greater experience of fitness. And the result of that or the byproduct or the feedback of that is that I'm running a 10K. Um, whereas the process is the focus and the output is the feedback or the, res the um, byproduct. I don't know if that helps around goals. And then expectations, I think expectations are very different 
from goals um, because they're not they're often not conscious and I don't I, I don't know. I mean, I hear what you're saying that expectations are led by your values, like where you expect yourself to be um, kind and um, loving. I think that that can be better set as an intention. Okay, so my intention is to be kind and loving and I expect myself to do that. And when I don't do that, I'm disappointed because of the expectation. And there's a, I think there's a really fine nuance here between expectation and intention. Because if I have an intention, I may not always meet that intention. The expectation is the judgment. It's like I expect that of myself. And when I don't meet that expectation, then I'm a disappointment. Then I've failed in some way. And so back to you hope I think um, that th there's a disappointment perhaps like the feelings that you're still having are a feeling of disappointment and that's because maybe there's an expectation that you should be able to make a difference with this person you should be able to convince them you should be able to help them you should be able to save the world and the question that I have for you is who says who says that you should and it may be you but the likelihood is that there's a deeper should underneath that um, from somebody else you know is like you should be able to make magic with people somehow and when we allow ourselves to free ourselves from the should and move back to the intention, you can recognize that you may have an intention to um, be present and be responsive and be non-reactive. I'm talking about me here. Um, and there are times when that's not the case. And then I say, okay, so now I get to set my intention again. And it's the should and the expectation that generates the judgment. So I'm wondering, Dido, if that, if that helps to clarify anything about, about the expectations. So um, I realize I didn't read the rest of what you said. Um, our goals, conscious things you explicitly choose, and expectation unconscious shoulds running in the background. That's kind of what I feel like um, is the distinction, Dido. And Sandra Brown, hi from Brighton, Ontario. Thank you so much for joining us. Hope says, I do want to make a difference. I've always felt this way from a child. Exactly. And that's your intention, Hope. So many of us, you know, came here to make a difference. I believe we all did, actually. But some of us are really, really driven to make a difference. And um, so when we feel like we didn't, then we get disappointed because we should make a difference. We can have an intention to make a difference and move from that intention. And then sometimes we make a difference and sometimes people are not receptive. And the other thing is, too, Hope, you never know what kind of difference you've made. You know, it's very possible that someone you've spoken to or someone that you have just smiled at, you may have made their day. You know, just to give somebody a compliment, who knows, that could be life-altering for them in that moment. You just don't know what kind of impact you're having. So the the... The thing we want, I guess we've made a couple distinctions here. We made distinctions about goals and the expectations, whereas goals are kind of outward feedback um, or, or markers, um, tangible markers that are, are um, the result of an ongoing way of being 
perhaps. You know, like we're setting goals of making X number of dollars or, or accomplishing, you know, lifting 200 pounds um, of weight or any, you know, these are goals, but the, the process, the intention is I want to, I want to improve my health or the intention is I'm going to be loving and kind, you know, I'm intending to be loving and kind, for instance. So um, that, that that's the distinction between um, an intention and a goal. And then expectation is the judgment is like, I expect myself to meet my goals. If I don't meet my goals, or I don't uphold my intentions, then I get to be disappointed or upset or unhappy or angry. If you don't meet my expectations, then I'm angry at you because you disappointed me. Um, hello, Kirst I, I don't know if it's Christina. Christina, maybe? Um, welcome. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. And Sandra says, I'm expecting my grown children and grandchildren should always love and appreciate me for all I do. I'm estranged with two of three of my adult family. The world is so crazy right now. So Sandra, I, I hear you that um, you're expecting that your grown children and grandchildren should always love and appreciate you for everything. And I bet you that that expectation is a source of a lot of pain for you because I'll bet that there are all kinds of places where they disappoint you. And as, as challenging as it may be to release that expectation, perhaps you could instead put your attention on having, having an intention to love and appreciate your children and grandchildren, no matter what they do. And that place of your intention toward them, I guarantee you it's going to change your experience. Whether it changes their behavior or not, it's gonna change your experience if you put your attention on loving them, no matter what they do. Um, love is one of these magical things. It is the most magical thing in that when, um, when we give it, that's when we experience it. And what I've found is that when I have expectations of others, um, whatever they are, uh, it's, it's imposing a judgment on them in some way or another and it creates a conflict within me that's that's very very um, deep and profound and it feels really real and so what we get to do is to when we want to receive instead if we focus our attention on giving you know and I don't mean um, giving all your energy because you want attention or, or whatever because you, you want that energy back. I just mean in this, in this situation around love and expectation of love from others that the, the freedom comes when we just instead love them. And it doesn't mean making yourself a victim of them. It just means whether you even talk to them or not, to love them from where you are and to experience your love for them, that enriches your heart. And they may actually feel it. So, wow, this has been an awesome morning. I'm wondering, Dido, if that conversation around goals and expectations and intention and... Um, presence helped. Really what this is doing, this whole conversation is bringing us back to the notion of presence. And um, that's what it all comes down to is when we release ourselves of judgment and expectation and shoulds, 
then we get to be more present to what it is and, and, and more accepting. And as we actually open-heartedly embrace and accept what is, um, life becomes a much richer, fuller, fulfilling, joyful experience. So I just want to say thank you to all of you who played this morning and everybody who's listened and listening. And, and it's just such a gift to share this time with you. So um, I'm here weekday mornings and it's Friday. So I'm going to wish you all a wonderful, wonderful weekend. And be sure to check out the other programming here on Enlightened World Network over the weekend and every day. Uh, so much to lift your heart, lift your spirits, create community. And I hope I'll see you back here at 9 a.m. Eastern on Monday. Uh, I'm here every weekday morning. This is The Core Connection. And um, Dido says before I wrap up, uh, I'm so grateful for those distinctions between goals, intentions, and expectations. And write them, wrote them down to refer to and use. Well, thank you, Dido. I don't know if everybody in the world has the same definitions around it that I do, but I have found those distinctions to be helpful, and hopefully you will too. And uh, Jennifer says, accepting what's been, uh, what is has been enlightening for me. I'm open to love and receive love. Thank you, Mira. Namaste. Namaste to you, Jennifer. And it's true that when we accept what is, we are in a state of flow. So there's a, an ability to both give and receive. And uh, Jennifer, thank you for your wish of a blessed weekend. And the same to all. So much love and appreciation for you. Have a great weekend. <laughs>